We discussed the three phases before, project preparation, business blueprint and realization. And in this presentation, we'll concentrate on the final preparation phase and the activities related to that. So in the final preparation phase, after all the configuration has been done, integration testing and unit testing has been completed, now it's time to do, get the users to go and do the testing. So before that, you should try to load some data in the system. Before you actually load all the master data and transaction data in the final client, you'll be doing a few trial runs. These are called mock runs. So you'll be doing a couple of mock runs to ensure that your data migration templates, the data information in that is accurate, and you load into the system, and you do the relevant testing. So what is data migration? Is to migrate all the legacy system data. For example, you have to migrate all the GL master data, customer master data, vendor master data, asset master data. For this case study, we have chosen L2L associates. So they'll be having all these four relevant master data transactions related to the FI module. Now there's more master data coming up for the other modules like cost center master data for CO module. The SD and MM modules will have their own relevant master data transactions and the um, transaction data also. Similarly for the HR module also, they'll have their own data migration schedules. So for FI migration, you have to first import all the master data to the system. And then next step is to, to load the transactional data. So we'll look into the data migration later. The other test you've got to do is stress and volume tests. This means when you try to do multiple loads of data, whether there's any problem in the system, and also you need to do some f transactions after you load some transaction to do some trial runs, like running mass, like running the depreciation run for assets in the background and so on. So some transactions which take a lot of time or which takes a lot of volume to do, those kind of transaction, heavily system involved transactions, you have to go and configure, the, you have to go and test those in the system to ensure that this will be okay when you actually go live. User acceptance testing is to get the users to go and do the testing. So you have to prepare test case scenarios for them, testing documents for them related to some master data and transactional data. And you need to produce those documents to the users, get them to follow it on their own and to mention whether they pass or fail. Of course, you have to give user training. This is very important to get the, to help out the users with a system. Some users, like super users, will be a part of your project from day one, but some of the end users will only be coming at this stage. So it's the first time they're seeing SAP, so it's very important you take it to them as slow as possible, and you need to explain what is SAP, why we're implementing, and so on. Those change management will be done by the client, but with regard to the system-wise, because everything will be new for them, new icons, new screen, new processes. So you're going to take it little by little and explain to them as slow as possible with every single step you need to tell them why we're doing this and so on. And you need to give them user training manuals. This you could copy some from the user acceptance testing documents and copy them and just edit them to prepare user manuals. For all the transactions that they're going to do, you've got to prepare user manuals. So the new users, they'll be familiar with the system. In case they have any doubts, they can always go back to the manuals and follow those procedures. And when you're giving user training, it's very important that you tell them the integration point of view of their transactions. For example, some users will only be doing posting some, uh, posting some relevant entries uh, and parking them, or not actually posting the document, just entering some entries and parking the document. And another user will, will post the document. So you must tell them that and their relevant data and show them the training on SAP. At the same time, let them also do the training on their own laptops or PCs. Do not use a generic SAP company code like triple zero one or one thousand because then they will not get the idea that they have to use their own one so you may, they must be familiar with their own transactions so they must put their own company code own chart of accounts their own controlling area and so on what is relevant to their transactions so when you conduct user training make sure that you use their company code details and not a generic one which i've already prepared earlier so ensure that your training slides and training manuals reflect their company code details And finally, we have cutover strategies. So cutover means just before you go live, you decide this is the day we are going to cut over. So no more transactions are going to be posted in the old system. 
from this day onwards you're going to post everything to the live system and when are we going to migrate the last set of data when are we going to migrate all the master data when we're going to do the transaction data